Hey, welcome to Graphic Policy Television GPTV. In my hands is a recent release. This is Mandela and the Generals from Plow Publishing House. Uh, it is. It covers, you know, generally the, the true story. I'm not going to say it's like a, a absolute per perfect, like moment for moment biography or anything like that. But it covers uh, the transition of South Africa from the white dominated uh, apartheid state to. Uh, the democratically elected, you know, version we've kind of gotten now. So um, the story is kind of told through a really interesting perspective. Um, it follows this guy. His name's he's the former chief of South Africa's military. It's Constant uh, Vil Viljon. I, I'm gonna. I'm sure I'm butchering that name, and I, I apologize about that. Uh, and he retires, and then he's kind of brought back into things, leading the uh, white. And I don't really. I guess white nationalists is the best way of putting it. Who uh, are, of course, not happy with Mandela, who's been released and is trying to bring peace to South Africa and um, figure out how it's going to transition from this apartheid state to uh, democracy. Um, and it's a really interesting story in that you know it, it touches upon you know what happened in that nation during this transition. And then it turns out that Mandela sort of wound up having secretive meetings with uh, uh, Viljan and uh, basically talked him out of the just kind of a violent bloodshed and um, and brought him into the political system. Uh, now, obviously, it's, it's a fascinating thing to talk about in today's world where we've seen another rise of, of white nationalism, white separatism. And there's this debate as to what to do in that situation. Do you bring them into the political fold and treat them as uh, a um, as a philosophy that's willing to be, you know, you're willing to debate? Like, it, is it a a philosophy that at all should be acknowledged as as you know someone should have or is, should be able to have? Um, or are they so far gone, do you have to deal with them militarily? Um, and, you know, that's kind of being discussed and, and debated today. Um, and it's interesting in this in that you really need to, you know, while, while some, I'm sure, will read this and say, oh, you need to bring them in and, uh, politically and give them a voice, uh, I think that kind of misses the point, is, is Mandela wound up being pragmatic in many ways. They could have easily gotten rid of this white supremacy through military means. They had the the volume, the numbers, they had the means, uh, and it would have been a very, and they had international backing. It would have been a bloody battle and a bloody time, and who knows what would have happened at the other end. But Mandela saw it as uh, something a little bit different in that he wanted to stop the bloodshed. He saw it uh, that there was a peaceful means that this person wasn't completely far gone, and uh, brought him in and basically talked him all you know off from the brink. And through some various events, showed that he was going to do this. This, this military person. Uh, could lead the white uh, South Africans, the Afrikaners, um, into, I don't want to say peaceful coexistence, but political coexistence. Um, and now the question would be is, you know, can we do that today? You know, we've got uh, outright Nazis who have seized power in various nations. Uh, we have, of course, white supremacy in the United States, um, the question, this would be like, do you give a platform to, to, uh, to Spencer, Richard Spencer and say, you know, you should, you should go and bring in your political party and hope that he wins a couple seats. So at least he has, you know, a voice at a table and they can kind of, uh, vent their rage that way. Um, or, you know, do you just deal with it? through violent means. Um, it's a really fascinating read because of that. Uh, so the writer is John Carlin. He was, a, he was a, the South African correspondent for the Independent of London. So I'm assuming that this is very well researched. I'm not going to kind of nitpick on that and the history at all. I just don't, I don't know the history, so it's very difficult for me to do. Uh, so if anyone really knows South African history and have read this, 
you can speak up and and please comment. Um, but the thing, I it's just it's a really fascinating read today, and it would be and it's got me uh, debating. Like I I yeah, it's it's really it's interesting. Um, I don't think the the situation is completely analogous to what's going on today. I've seen some people th say it is. Um, I, I don't think that's the case. Uh, I think today is more uh, analogous to uh, the 1930s and the rise of fascism then. Uh, so uh, while you know there are some aspects that we can, might be able to learn from this, uh, I don't think it's a one-for-one -one situation. So uh, overall, like it's, it is one that if you are into history and if you're into graphic novels, this is something to absolutely get and check out. Um, very under the radar and, um, and worth checking out. The art is 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 interesting. Um, I don't so I don't know Plow Publishing House at all. Um, so this is kind of the art style. It's got a, it's got this very like I don't want to say March style to it, but there's there's quite a few there's there's some comic artists here in the U.S. that this reminds me of. Um, I think I already just showed that page. It's kind of a, uh, there's there's quite a few creators I think this reminds me of, and uh, yeah, so it's uh, yeah. It's interesting. The imagery is, I think, really good, especially when you get kind of getting the violence and some of the bloodshed that was going on. The, the, the use of colors, I think, is is top-notch. Like, what is emphasized and what's not through color is, is really, really interesting. Um, so, yeah, it's a thought-provoking graphic novel. And if you care about history... I mean, I, I lived through that history, that transition. I do not know enough about it. Um, I, you know, I was very aware at that point in time and, and remember watching television and learning about all this stuff, but like, I, I don't know. I, you know, here in the U S not like we learned South African history very, very, uh, much. Um, so yeah, if you are a history buff, like check it out. If you're a political buff, I would check it out as well. It's just, it's, it's really good. It's, it's, the best. it's, it's very thought provoking. It's really interesting and, and kind of gets you to reflect upon today's world. Uh, so this is out now. Uh, you should be able to get in comic shops. You can definitely get in bookstores. Uh, obviously, go support your comic shop first and foremost. There's a link beneath this video. Uh, put in your zip code. Tell your shops in, uh, near you. No shop, no problem. Uh, you can get this from the affiliate links underneath. Definitely check with the shops first. I, I don't know the, the situation there. Um, you can get it from the affiliate links. They are affiliate links, so we get a small percentage of that by doing that. You help support our site. Now, if you're into politics, if you're into graphic novels or comics, you can check us out every single day at graphicpolicy.com. We're on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Tumblr, all at Graphic Policy, keeping it nice and consistent. So until next time, keep reading those comics and keep it geeky. Hey, thanks for watching the previous video from Graphic Policy Television. Just by watching, you help support our site. Thank you so much. Now, if you're watching these videos, you probably care about geeky things like movies, television, comic books, toys, games, video games, you name it. You can go and subscribe right now to our YouTube channel to stay in touch and catch all the new videos, or check out our website at graphicpolicy.com. There's a nice link on this end of the video. But as always, thank you for watching. Keep on rocking and keep it geeky.